Hey there Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker Application Staff. Another video in the series of getting to know your OSP P300M control. In some of the other videos we talked about setting work offsets and the outline of the screens. Well today we're going to do a manual tool setting process. We're going to assume for the sake of this video that you don't have a, an automatic tool setter, you know, one of these little fancy doodads. So let's make that guy just disappear like magic. So now we have to figure out how to do a tool setting in the manual fashion. There we have our tool in the spindle. There we have our block down on the, uh, on the vise. And now for the sake of this particular demonstration, we are going to use the part as our datum. And because of that, we need to have the work offset Z already set. A lot of times I've seen customers that don't have an automatic tool setter mount a piece of steel on their machine, one of these corners out of the way, and set a work zero to it so that that, um, uh, that datum will be what they touch all of their tools off of. In our case, I already set my work zero Z for work coordinate number one, so I need to make sure that one's active. The fact that it's yellow means it is active. If it were not, I could simply highlight, say, select zero and OK. I do need to make sure that the datum I'm touching off of is zero at the uh, work coordinate that is currently active. And so now touching off the tool is completely simple. I'm going to go into manual mode and either with the manual pulse generator or the jog function buttons, I simply bring the tool down to make contact with the part or uh, bring it down and measure it with my preference, a one, two, three block. I can't synthesize a one, two, three block in this, uh, uh, this graphic, but let's just assume that I've got the one inch side of a gauge block in between the tip of the tool and the top of the material. By touching the tool data button on my control, I will bring myself right to the magazine info page. A lot of people aren't familiar with the way this thing looks. And just as a little hint for you, if you ever wanted to, you could touch F8 display change and change the screen option to tool offset and compensation. And lo and behold, that looks an awful lot like what the rest of the world sees as a tool offset page. But once you get used to the tool settings page, this one makes a lot more sense in my opinion. So I am now exactly one inch away from my measured Z0 datum. So first thing I want to do is reach up and touch the number that's represented on, in the upper left hand corner, the actual tool number. That's the tool that's in the spindle. And therefore, when it's touched, its offset will show up in the columns here. Now I have the four column option on my simulator. You may only see two columns, not a big deal. All we're looking for is the very first, which is HA and DA, the geometry and the cutter comp column. So what I wanna look for is the length offset in geometry, if you don't have the where column, we'll highlight it touch the word calibrate and calibrate will mean the machine is going to take into account where it is positioned right now when measuring the tool and once I've hit the calibrate button now I only need to express what is the difference between the tip of the tool right now and the actual measured Z0 datum in our case we just established that the tip of the tool is exactly one inch from the top of the part so I will put in one inch into my calibrate buffer and when I hit input it then measures the coordinate. Notice that this is positive 4.3635 whereas a bunch of the other brands of machine measure a tool in this fashion from the fully retracted Z position to the top of the part. Therefore, all of your tools are measured as a negative value. And they're generally pretty large, negative eight inches, negative nine inches. The reason Akuma uses this method, a positive tool length offset method, is that if this tool goes into the machine and gets measured for this part, 
that offset will be good for every subsequent part that you put in the machine as long as you change the work coordinate. The machines that use a negative value, even if the machine has not come out of the, of the spindle or the magazine, when you change parts, you have to retouch that tool because that negative value is encompassing not just the tool length offset, but also the work zero. So positive offsets seem to work a lot better. So now that we've measured that tool, I can kick over into MDI mode and call up the next tool. In my case, I am not using a tool uh, change macro at G115 or G116, but I'm perfectly okay see, saying T1M6 and doing my cycle start, tool retracts. I did not have to return the Z to a full upright travel. It's perfectly happy uh, retracting on its own. And now I'll just repeat the process. I'll move over into my x-axis and jog or hand wheel the tool into our location. And once again, come down and touch the top of the material or the one, two, three block as we've, uh, as we've established. Come back over to our tool data. Now the actual tool number has changed to what is physically in the spindle. So once again, I'll touch it touch its L offset in geometry for HA and say calibrate zero input. And by doing this, I can just rapidly go through and gauge each individual tool as it comes through. We'll do one more shell mill just to say we did. Move it into position. touch off. In this case, I didn't want to use a one, two, three block. I came down and I touched the top of the material. Maybe I, I made a slight, uh, a slight uh, surface cut across the top. At any rate, now with the shell mill, I'm sitting directly at our Z position. So this time when I calibrate, instead of saying 1.0, I'll just say zero and now it is properly gauged as well. Hope this helps you out. If you have any questions or problems, feel free to reach out to your local Gossiker application staff. We're always here to help.